Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for BOW to inviting me. It's a great opportunity to present my work here in Asia. And uh, so I'm from Belgium. I study interior design in uh, St. Luke in Belgium, in Brussels. And so I'm an interior designer. And also, of course, I had some design courses at school. And I will show you my story and my work right away. So after my study, and already in my study, I created this piece, which is a screen uh, called Paradox Mobile. It was a, a student work. So I had the first success with this piece a few years later when I was selling this piece to uh, Ralph Lauren in New York. We was uh, opening a furniture, furnishing and a decoration store. I show you here my first chair. So after my study, I was trying to find my way to make innovation. And I tried to, I start with the material, to work on the material, to find a way to understand how moved the material. And this was my way to make some innovation. So this was the first try, this very heavy chair with recuperation material. And, uh, but it was already reproducible. It looked like a sculpture, but it's made with industrial elements, like the tube, the big tube you can see on the back. So it was the first try, it was not for a client, it was just for me to uh, make some research. After some research, some prototypes, some uh, creation made by hand, by my hand, because I didn't have uh, another opportunity and uh, other choice. I don't want to go uh, working in an architectural office, a studio, and so on. And so, step by step, I first work with steel, because steel is a very easy material to to fold, to create objects, very cheap. And uh, with very few material, you can already many, do many, many things. So steel is cheap, it's easy to weld, to, to fold and everything. You can make light objects, also, also very heavy or very massive things. So everything is almost possible to make with steel. So I created this first collection. A few years after my study, I created my own brand. And this was my first product. That was a Virgo shelf. So it's a shelf made of five shelves and um, with inclination. The one in the middle is horizontal and it's a geometric drawing because it's very geometric and, uh, and it works for different sizes. The biggest element is two meter high, 130 for the medium and 80 for the smaller, which is size for CDs at the time, we used a lot of CDs <laughs> for the small uh, shelf and uh, the bigger one, the bibliotheque, and so on. So that was the document presentation I did at the time. This was also, so I created my, my own brand, small brand, it was diffused in Benelux. So I approached the importator of uh, Cartel and um, Moroso. In Belgium, we are a very good agent, of course, and they, they distribute my Vigo shelf and this mirror. This mirror is a, was an even innovation. It was the first mirror ever done with a vertical axe of rotation. We all remember maybe the old mirrors in the past we were in inclination horizontally. And uh, that was only for purpose of material because I learned after this project that uh, the, why they do this psyche it was because uh, the size of the glass was not productable in the biggest uh, size. So they invent this way to inclinate the mirrors. So this mirror was the first mirror on a vertical axe with a hook on the back. Now, today, I think there, is, there are many. Even here in my room uh, in the hotel is a small model like this. So it was very, very large, largely copied because it was a good idea. We don't copy the... <laughs> The bad ideas, of course. And so, of course, I forgot to say, this was in stainless steel. So it was one step more in the difficulty of the material. And I created a third project at the time in this collection, was this table in aluminum called Quatre Pattes. Very light table uh, that you can take out the feet easily. So a very product, very thing for transportation, for cost, and so on. And uh, OK, so that was. Steel, stainless steel, aluminum. So aluminum is a very huge um, world with many kinds of aluminum, diverse aluminum. 
And uh, also all this metal is fantastic because the stage, the same material can be different hardness when they are heat and so on. So I discovered all those things step by step and uh, I did an experience with this. So regarding the distribution aspect, after two years of, uh, I was producing myself with uh, people I engaged to, to well, so to work for me, I stopped this system because I was uh, only busy with production problems and not anymore with creation. And when I st st stopped this process, I had a great inspiration. And here I would like to say that my philosophy in design is an emotional equation with four parameters, which are functionality, beauty, technology, and culture, which means that when I have an ID, all those parameters are converging in the same time and I have this ID, which is, when I say technology, of course, it's supposing cost price of production cost, and um, functionality is clear. The beauty is something uh, that we can, uh, we can see after, <laughs> maybe. So, this is a bench. The bench called Le Bon means the bench. And I had this uh, great intuition to fold metal in three, dim three dimensions without mold, which is a quite innovative process, which is not a new technology at all. It's made with old machines. So this could be done 100 years ago with the folding machines. And I found this process to bend 3D shapes from flat sheets. So this bench was not draw on computer, was even not draw with a, a concrete dimension. It was made directly on the, on the machine. So which means that here the material is expressing himself. The shape is coming out of the material, which is a quite new way to make design and is on the reflection of the material and the experience that I had before with visiting um, factories. We were making elements of my previous collection that we were assembling in my studio, atelier, workshop. So this, this bench is a bit the, the icon of my work. It's resuming all the aspects because you see the shape is very sensual and it's coming out of material. So it means it's an intimate very, verity, reality, intimate reality of the material and what design can be. So here also is the aspect of the shape, but also the economy, because the shape of this bench, which is banded three-dimensionally, increase a lot the resistance, three times. So we use three times less material, which is also very important in, the, in design, in production design. For this reason, it will be, uh, I presented in Milan in uh, 2000 in Salone Satellite, and it was very immediately understood, understood by the Italian brands. And I had many um, requests to represent this model in the brands. And I signed a contract with MDF Italia. We was at the time a young brand, not so known, and we grew together. Here we see the bench in the Chinese pavilion in Belgium, in Brussels, which is uh, from the Expo 58 Universal Exposition, which is now a Japanese art museum. And so this bench is in many museums in Belgium and also all around the world. So this collection were increasing with uh, MDF Italia. We did the table basse, the, the coffee table, and the bench, of course, in different dimensions. So today, my, my, since 10 years now, my studio is working in four fields of design. Furniture and accessories for inter, inter, industrially produced for Italian brands. I worked uh, more or less for 10 Italian brands. We are also busy with art design. Art design is a new dimension of design. We appeared uh, maybe eight years ago, which is now a strong market. Art design is limited edition pieces and uh, is sold through galleries, art galleries, art fairs, and so on. I'm still making architecture, and also we are busy with street furniture, which is a, another world, and which is, of course, social and uh, for everybody. So after the bench, we did the grand table. This table is, a, is our best seller, still our best seller. It's a table made with the same principle of the bench, except that the table has to be more flat. So we have some reinforcement 
underneath. And uh, the table is the longer is 4 meter 40. We have eight dimensions for two meter, from 2 meter to 4 meter 40. And um, OK, it's a very simple table, as you can see. And we have also the little shape details of the folding, 3D folding that I invent. After this, I continue with this process of reinforcing using less material and give this sensual shape, which is also very ergonomic. And we have the picnic table that I designed with the Quernans, the owner of Extremis, the, this Belgian company of outdoor furniture. So this piece was also a really a statement and uh, still something which is uh, time, time after time accepted more and more. So it's funny to see that uh, in the beginning we don't sell anyone and years after year we sell more and more because people have to accept to integrate this design, uh, which is take time sometimes. So we can see here another view. And this, this table, picnic table, is stackable also. The weight also of the table is, is 60 kilos. It's entering into elevators. It's going on the small terrace of uh, apartments and so on. So it was really perfect design. And this, with aluminum, we tried many other ways to, to reproduce this model in resin, in car, carbon fiber. And this is the best, still the best way to produce it. And also, of course, aluminum is also a mineral material, recyclable, and is uh, very ecologic. Another story is here, it is with the Padova. In 2003, I met uh, Mrs. De Padova, which is uh, one of the pioneers in Italy of uh, the design. She was the first selling design in Milan after the Second World War. And for me, Milanese people, the Padova is the reference of what design is historically. And uh, it was a nice personal meeting. You know, it's always going through people. And um, so uh, she let me the opportunity to design this credence, which is uh, in Chinese red here. And um, i show you a little bit inside the complexity of the construction. So we have a double envelope. And it's also a furniture which is a secret furniture because you cannot open it uh, naturally. People always try to, do, to open it from the middle to the outside. And here the doors are opening in the other way. So it's a kind of, you have to be initiated to use this, this, this uh, piece of furniture. And this is a limited edition of one of the 50 pieces. So in this, this side we were also uh, a bit in advance because it was five years before the fashion of uh, limited edition. This was another application of the process of the folding, 3D folding. We can give you very ergonomic shapes as well. For the part of our design also this uh, wall storage for magazines. In a poly mirror polish stainless steel, we give a nice animation, something more, another dimension into the function of the object. After this, I had the opportunity to work with Driade. Driade is one of the most famous Italian brands, working with uh, very famous designers like Philip Stark, Ronald Rad. And so I had the opportunity to work with molds, because all the pieces that you have seen before was not no using mold at all. And um, so this is the first project I did for Driade. It's an umbrella stand in roto molding, which is a quite usual uh, system to produce furniture. A second step was this chair, which was making air molding, very advanced technology of uh, injection. This is another piece uh, molded in aluminum. And this is produced in Asia for Driade, and is cast aluminum. So this was, it is a big successful piece, because you can have one branch, and you can add more and more branch and play with this in many composition, like this. Oh, like that, and it's something like, uh, it's like fish in the water. After I did also uh, this uh, trays for Driade, which are made in this technique of folding metal. Here was another nice experience, a project I developed, which is uh, very simple, in fact. So here, of course, we work with computers, with the, all the molded pieces. They were designed with 3D modeling in computer. And this is a very simple shape. It looks compli complicated, but it's just a, a twisted S. It's called the S table, because it's also stable. 
That's why the name is uh, Double Sense. And this table is uh, offered the ergonomy. So in Italy, everybody knows that uh, in the companies of design, the most selling, sold t round table is the Sarinen, you know, the tulip, the famous tulip table. And until now, nobody had, could compete with this uh, essential Sarinen table. So this piece was uh, maybe one of, of the first real concurrent for the Sarinen table. And uh, we produce it very well, and we sell it very well as well with MDF Italia. And this is made in crystal plants. So it's a kind of uh, Corian which is molded. The Corian exists only in, uh, in uh, sheets, and the crystal plant you can mold. So my, you understood material is quite important for me, and uh, it's also influencing my design a lot, the choice of the material. And uh, in this case, was the, the material was chosen afterwards because it's, uh, we have tried many, many tests with different materials to finally use crystal, crystal plant. And so you can see the shape of this uh, table is changing from the point of view. So you, when you see you have one object like this, when you turn around, it's another object. So this is also something quite interesting, I think, to have metamorphic objects. This is the initial project with the glass top, where you can see from the top this beautiful uh, shape, which is a bit like a DNA ribbon. So it's a natural, very natural uh, shape that you can find in the nature, in the microscopic uh, nature. We did also uh, other version, the black version. So this is another story with MDF Italia. They asked me to make a coat hanger, and I think about the, the first coat hanger ever was probably a tree when you put your jacket or your, your skin, uh, the animal skin to, to have, <laughs> I mean, in the prehistoric time. And so I, I designed the baobab. The baobab is an empty trunk with um, those bones and is also realized in crystal plants and diffused by MDF in 60 countries of the world. Another project with uh, another Italian brand, Skitch, uh, this table is a, uh, also made in crystal plants, and it's an evolution of uh, probably my grand table, because here we can sit on, this, on the end of the table. And uh, that was a nice experience, too. You can see the, the side, which is, the pieces really work from every side. This was the first experience in a sofa. Sofa is something very, quite difficult. Uh, it's a very science to realize, to see, have the comfort and all the aspects of ergonomy and uh, also, of course, the cost price. So this is Aubergine. It's a project that was a short time in collection, but unfortunately, it came out very fast because by the decision of the editor. That was a second experience with Ceruti Baleri. Ceruti Baleri is a, was initially Baleri, but was booked by Nino Ceruti, the, the same person who did the fashion uh, brand Ceruti. And here we have the sumo with a Cheruti tweed, you know, the famous Cheruti tweed because Cheruti is uh, making a fabric since uh, more than 100 years and still active in the fabric. And um, so this sumo is called sumo because it's, it's fat and uh, gives very nice shapes. We have many covers like leather or fabric, many fabrics. This is an aniline leather, and also the two-seater. So here we can see uh, the wine cooler called Cruise. It's a wine cooler in silver, plated, and uh, okay, it's asymmetric. It's a bit like a front of a cruise, uh, like a Titanic or something like that. It's very well done by Driad. It's, very, it's made uh, also in, in Asia, and. Uh, it's incredibly uh, well done. This is a view of my studio in Brussels. And I'm going to show you now uh, some limited edition that I made in the art design world field with uh, sell-through galleries. So they are all in metal. And this is the Archie du Chaise. So this is a piece not to be sold in large scale, of course, as you can see, because the functionality is a bit less uh, it's very comfortable, but uh, of course you need space. You don't put this chair or on the table. You put it there like a sculpture. And uh, so this 
as a, is my process, is a cut sheet which is folded. So it's simply you have two visions of the project. You have the vision flat and the, in, the, in, in volume. So it's a kind of process that I push you. And um, after the bench, it's, uh, all, all those things were possible to do. And this Archiduchesse is a, yes, it's a, it's a princess as a chair. Because a chair is also um, something which is like a person, you know? We, you can refer yourself. It's a statue, statute also. So that's why also because chair is probably the most iconic object in design. When you think design is always the chair because you can refer yourself to a chair. So this is, uh, of course, talking to uh, ladies and uh, they think about marriage. People tell me many times, it's like a marriage chair, and, uh, which I never, I didn't know that we have marriage, marriage chair. So this is in a stainless, in a, sorry, in aluminum mirror polished, and uh, we have also the white version. So this is a limited edition of 18 pieces. We can see here with uh, the stool XST, which is uh, the male um, pendant of the feminine Arch Archiduchesse. This was an exhibition in Belgium at uh, Grand Tornu. Here I show you the gun metal bench. So this is an evolution of the bench that I showed you before, Le Bon. And we went st one step forward in dematerialization. So you can see here that there's even less material than on the bench, which is plain. It's not for this purpose that we did it, but uh, we'll, we'll show you an image later. But I did also some uh, installation into the city of Brussels uh, of, of this bench um, for urban street furniture. And you know, in Brussels, people are making a lot of graffiti. And so it was a big problem with the surfaces. And so uh, suddenly after the first installation that I had to do very fast, I discovered that the vernish uh, anti-graffiti was not working. And we, I, decided, I found a way to have no graffiti anymore on a bench, is to have no surface anymore. So on this bench, it's impossible to make uh, graffiti. By hazard, I put the prototype on, on the auction one day. And it was booked by a gallery in Paris, and it was the start of my collaboration with galleries in Paris and in, in uh, other countries as well. So this is a limited edition of 12 pieces. It's called a gun metal bench, and it's made in uh, gun metal, which is a precious way to finish the, the pieces. You can see also the optic aspect. You have some uh, cinetic uh, effect sometimes when you are double double side of holes. So this is my T-chair. So it's, a, it's called T-chair because the, the, the drawing is a, is a T when it's flat. And then it's fold and it's resistant enough. So this, this piece I did in 1999 before the bench. So sometimes we do complicated things before and we come back to simple things after. So it's very comfortable chair. And still my reference for all the chair I designed in terms of ergonomy. So in the series for outdoor, I did also the gunmetal chair, which is in aluminum, is very light and resistance, resistance. You can see here some cinetic aspect with the holes. It makes a new, another dimension into the object. This is another story, is a mirrors made in metal, which are bombated. It's a kind of sculpture, it's a limited edition of uh, 18 piece, but it's still functional. It's not sculpture because the function is really to look at you into the mirror. You see yourself correctly in the middle and on the side you have some anamorphic aspects when you look at yourself. So this is another, another one. From bait, we have, you have a wide view on the world. So it's also the idea of this project was to remind that our vision is, is subjective. And, uh, when the, the reflection is mirror, it's also reality, but another reality. So that was a bit my idea to, to uh, experiment this um, aspect. Here we have another object, also a limited edition. It's a meteorite. So it's a piece that you, is lying on the floor, and it's a magazine rack in the end. Please really appreciate it at, at this time. This is uh, the trophy of the Belgian cinema. It's a Magritte du cinéma. A few years ago, it's like La Palme d'Or in Cannes or um, the César in uh, the prize for the award for the cinema. And uh, so this was Magritte. So it, is, it has to be inspired by 
uh, Magritte's work. We was, you know, Magritte is a Belgian painter of the surrealism, and is uh, the way they want to make this prize. Designed by me, but named Magritte. Here also, sometimes I work also with wood, even I'm a very uh, labelized metallic. And I will show you some architecture. This is a project I, I did in Ibiza, in the island of Ibiza in Spain, and, uh, which is a very nice island. And I had the opportunity to make a total project, which is quite unusual these times. So uh, I did, the building was existing, I transformed the architecture, and I had the opportunity to do absolutely everything in the, in the house. Well, there are some pieces of furniture were not of mine. As you can see, this is uh, not my design, but you will see inside some, it was also the opportunity to make new prototypes. Because for me, one of the moments important in the process of a project is when you have the prototype in front of you. This is the, in the end, the most, more intense moment when you have the piece realized like you talk it before. So this is a quite important moment for me. And so I like to make prototypes. So I'm producing prototypes all the time. Uh, and so uh, also this is why I like to make architecture, because I have always possibility to make new experiments. So this is a, a small desk. In, uh, it's in wood and uh, painted, of course. You see here the interior. And this is the masterpiece of the, the house, is the kitchen. Making solid uh, thick wood, and you have uh, in the cube or everything. You have the, the refrigerator, you have the washing machine. Everything is included in this cube. I think it was a nice result. Also, you can see the details that I like to design. And also, the, what is important to say is that the door handles, the handles are not added. It's a, Subtraction of material, which is also a nice concept, I think. And with this subtraction of material, also the dust doesn't enter into the, the drawers because it's going up. So here is the kitchen, because kitchen is the, the place where people meet anytime. So you can see here a reflection of the blob mirrors. And also I like this picture because, you know, I designed these stairs, sculptural stairs over there. And so we, can, we could have uh, more terrace on the roof of the house. This is a concrete table, fixed under the floor. Also in the room of this house, I try to make a kind of concept and kind of uh, statement, and maybe also a start of a conception for hotels. So this was my idea in this project, to, to try to make a concept to be reproduced afterwards in hotels or uh, big projects that I don't, didn't have the opportunity at, at this moment to do, but uh, could be. <laughs> so everything is designed. The bed, you can see uh, also uh, some um, other pieces. Also in the bathroom, I designed uh, the tubs, the lavabos, which are made in epoxy. And so there are so many experiments, experience, which is uh, what I like to do, which I like to do. This is another architectural project uh, that I did in Brussels, which you can see the floor are in steel and everything is black and white. It's nice to have this old architecture with the new, with contemporary furniture, it's a nice uh, contrast. This is a public uh, project for a bibliotheque, a library in, uh, in Brussels. This is an art gallery I did also in Brussels for Easy Brachot. And now I come back a little bit to furniture and lamps. So after uh, having, making my own process of producing, producing the furniture, I had the opportunity to work with molds, with Dryad and MDF. And here, this is a third stage. So this is 3D printing. You know, in Belgium, we have uh, one of the pioneers of the 3D printing, which is called uh, Materialize. And they called me to make some projects, lam some lamps projects, because they have this brand, MJX by Materialize. So this is Gamet, and this is a lamp that we have been working a lot, maybe one year on it, to design this shape without any reference. Because, you know, the 3D printing is no constraint, so you are in the total empty. It's another way to, to, go, to start a project and to have design, because there is, in theory, no limit. So we were inspired by nature and by some uh, natural uh, vegetal uh, 
cements of the trees was coming down. You see the helicopter um, scene, seeds. And uh, so this is uh, the lamp gamete, which is very special shape. And also the light was very important to not be blinded by the light. And you can see the detail of the, the small holes over there is like a, a skin look by micro, microscope. Another, another project made with uh, MGX was this alg lamp. So here we are totally free, and this piece should not be realized by mold because it's too complicated, like the previous one. So this is a challenge when you work with MGX to show what is possible to do. So we push very far the, this concept. Here, this is another, another completely other project made for Korean, is made in Korean. It's a thermoformate Korean bench which is three meter, <coughs> sorry, three meter 60 long. It's a unique piece at the time, at this time. Made for an event for Korean, they commissioned me to do, to design. They realized themselves, of course. This is another collaboration with uh, FIAM Italia, which is a very strong brand in Italy. They are curving glass, so they have their own production, which is today a bit unusual. They have a brand with their own production. So they work only with glass and bent glass. So this is a graph desk, so it's a very fluid shape. And of course, it was a long time to make this project re realizable. And also because of the problem of stability, because you have only three points on the floor. So we had to many, make many changes, many tests to, to have the right stability to be sellable. It's really a piece I, I was very satisfied by the result. This is not a collaboration with uh, FIAM, and it's made uh, this year. At the Salon Immobile, we present this caldera mirror made in a fused glass. So it's another way to use glass, and it's mirrored afterwards. So you have many, many reflections, nice reflections. Another project of this year is this uh, cone chair. It's a collaboration with a Brazilian brand from Sao Paulo, which is also uh, nice to make collaboration with Oversea company and uh, Brazil, as you know, is a uh, very opening and very strong now uh, in economy. So the innovation here, this chair is, you can see, is like a insect a little bit, and it's at this point. So I think it's a, a new kind of chair, never seen before. Still possible to do chairs where we are light and uh, practical like this one. So. Uh, about innovation, many people think it's not possible to innovate anymore, that everything has been done. And so uh, I think here uh, we, I proved the contrary. And uh, this is something uh, important for me is to go against these received ideas and uh, not to reproduce, reinterpret, but to really create something. This is my motiv motivation. So this is something completely different. It's a very simple desk for, uh, that designed for GISPEN. So it's very minimalistic and very cheap in a way. It's for home office, and uh, you can just fix on the wall. So you have only two legs by element, and it's for a home or office desk. Let me show you now some street furniture. Spontaneously, I, I designed those pieces, and I was proposing to the city of Brussels, which is an evolution of my process of bending. Why uh, urban furniture, street furniture? Because it's also on the reflection of the cost. So in the domestic furniture, it has to be light. You have to move it easily. In street furniture, you can use steel, which is much heavier. And so you can have a nice economy into the cost of the piece. And so I designed those elements. First, this one, which is quite funny, and, uh, but was not um, according to the city because it was uh, too many problems of security, uh, you know, the, the blind people and also the graffiti. But I, I learned by these meetings with the city when I was presenting this many aspects of designing street furniture, which is not at all something uh, simple because there are many, many aspects of security. So this was another a bus stop that uh, we realized a prototype and uh, I was showing it, for example, in Courtrake at the Biennale. And uh, we also implanted one prototype in Brussels, in a nice area. A declination in a bike protection. And also this uh, band combination of two functions, which is a uh, parking for bicycle and bench at the same time. So finally, I, I compete for a com competition for uh, the bus stops of Brussels city. 
and I win the co we win the competition with this model, which is, you can see, much more uh, traditional because responding to, the, to all the pres prescription of the city. But so this project will be implanted in Brussels in the next month. There will be 2,000 pieces implanted in Brussels. So this will be the, the bus stop of Brussels city, it's, which is a nice way to give an image to a city, to have the furniture dedicated to this city. We, you see, we can find some in, small innovation into the shape, which is this uh, round part in the front on the, on the, on the roof. <laughs> We did many attention to the details and the comfort of the seating. And here you can see the last uh, implantation I did in Brussels with the benches, with the holes, anti-graffiti, which is also uh, is, um, integrating very well in the city because it's quasi transparent. So everywhere you put them is integrated, which is also important for furniture, sweet furniture. This was the first version that we replaced now with the holes and uh, they were full of graffiti. I think I was, I'm just in time for the 40 minutes. Thank you very much for listening to me. So I think we have time for um, two, two, two questions for the lunch break. Yes, we have a very enthusiastic lady, young lady here. Um, hi, I'm Jali. I'm from College of St. Benyard. Uh, since your style mostly is like folding metals and stuff, for us students, we're, how can you give us some tips on how to find your identity as a designer? Look, uh, yes, I think um, you have to believe in, in your uh, mission on Earth, probably, or to be, uh, I was uh, convinced I have something to do, really, uh, in this world with this uh, process of metal, and so you have to think differently and uh, probably uh, not uh, accept received ideas, because uh, many received ideas are uh, here and uh, blocking our creativity. So I think it's important to, to, to be one step uh, ahead on the side and not uh, absorbing. Uh, most of the things people say are, are wrong, by my experience. So you have to do your own uh, reality and uh, find your own way. I was, I was looking on, mat find this on, on the material and, uh, and the reflection also, but uh, is your way. Everybody, everybody has to find his way. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Young gentleman over there, please. Hi, I'm Lutri from Jakarta. I make chairs, uh, uh, all from wood, from, mm -hmm. from old wood. Uh, I refinish and I, I, I reupholster it. Uh, so, any, I, don't, I cannot work with any other material other than wood, so mm -hmm. any advice how to optimize uh, wood to the, to, yeah, to the maximum, to the, to the max? Okay. Yeah. I think wood is a, it's a slow material. You, when you use metal, it's something which is much more industrial because you can be fast, you know, the cost still, uh, in any case, important in any project, the cost price, so massive wood is a long process, it's slow when you, uh, so, uh, in any case, I think it's not so, uh, maybe in China, I don't know, uh, the costs are <laughs> much, much lower. But uh, when it's produced in Europe, for example, it's difficult to make a nice chair in massive wood, which is sellable for mass markets. So, I think your orientation could be in a small diffusion, but high quality, with a high cost uh, for each chair. I don't see your chair, but... Uh, this could be uh, the possibility, and uh, because today we have a different choice possible, so I think, as I told you, art design, but it's also uh, collectors, people who have uh, no limit budget for if they like really the chair, and uh, they will buy it. And so, uh, so this is a new way <coughs> also to to sell uh, some furniture today. Perhaps I, I hope I respond to your question. <laughs> I think I have a question actually in addition mm. to that one because. Uh, I mean, is it, I mean, in terms of technology, mm -hmm. I mean, what you're dealing with is probably technology that's not available to this part of the world, or in, maybe Indonesia or whatever. And wood is a technology that's been around for ages, and, yeah. you know, the tools. Do you think it's, it's, it's easier to innovate with new technologies than it is with okay. traditional craft? 
you know, this is, this is a received idea that I hear many times that uh, new technology will help us to make new shapes. It's not true, you know? The shape, we, we can do it by, by our own. Of course, when the material you use guides you to uh, certain kind of shapes and so on. With 3D printing, of course, we can do everything, uh, etc. But I think the real goal is to do new things with the old technology, like I did with the, the bench and all this series. And I'm very proud of this because I'm, it's, it's not, uh, I demonstrate that it's not true, that uh, we don't need new technology to innovate. We can innovate with any technology, with any material, even with uh, natural uh, plants, you can, you know, uh, like we did in the past to make a, um, I don't find the world fair. With leaves, you can uh, trace it and make uh, objects. Uh, they are artisanal way, but uh, I think today we are, as, we, as I heard, we have a big period of transformation. Everything is tra in transformation, so everything is possible today. You can do uh, artisanal way, you can do uh, industrially, and you have everybody has this change. It's change to to find a new process, to find a new uh, old process, and to. We use the old process in, in an other way, and uh, there are many possibilities. I think 10 years before, it was, I was thinking I want to make uh, only design for Italian brands with huge diffusion. Today, uh, as we heard this morning also with Stefano Giovannoni, in Italy the time is a bit different, and uh, today I'm going a bit more on limited edition and uh, this kind of work, which is, uh, I think, today more... Uh, possible and more, uh, a more opportunity for that, that work. Great, we have hope. <laughs> Thank you very much, Xavier. Thank you very much for coming. You. See you out in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.